Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be talking a little bit about black holes. Specifically about a new kind of a proposition and a new kind of a hypothesis from Stephen Hawking himself that is going to be dealing with our understanding of these very beautiful but also very scary giants. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So today we're going to be using Space Engine and I just wanted to briefly discuss one of the papers that uh, Stephen Hawking uh, wrote and published online back in 2014 and the paper that's actually creating a lot of discussion amongst um, scientists who study black holes and considering the fact that Stephen Hawking is essentially the mastermind of black hole uh, studies, black hole sciences and he basically is the person who described them in a lot of detail. It does take uh, or it does mean to us that we need to actually consider this hypothesis um, in a lot of seriousness. So what exactly is he speculating? Well, let's actually talk about black holes a little bit more before we talk about what he proposed. We're actually going to go into a slightly different simulation here. Specifically one that doesn't look as gloomy and as terrifying as the one you just saw. This is actually a randomly or procedurally generated system that has two black holes. One really small one, uh, only about four masses of the sun, that's the one we're actually headed toward. Very, very tiny in size, but super, super powerful and super strong. And at this point, we're so close to it that we'll probably be shredded into little pieces and die a horrible, horrible death. And there's another one here nearby that is um, a lot more massive. It's, it has a mass of about 18,000 masses of uh, our sun. And we can discover it or we can actually find it by going a little bit farther away from here and just watching things uh, move around these unusual dark areas of space, which are, of course, black holes. So let's accelerate time a little bit until we see stars move. And we're going to discover the uh, area of space here where there's going to be the most motion. There's actually quite a lot of stars in this system and all of them are going to be spectacularly move around the black hole that has the most mass here. So here's how we're going to discover it. Now you may kind of notice that everything seems to be orbiting around this area. So this is where we're going to go. This is probably where the black hole actually is. And even though we don't see it just yet, it's going to appear any second as soon as we kind of see the center of motion of these stars. And this is actually how we've discovered the supermassive black hole at the center of our own galaxy as well. Now, this is not a galaxy. What you're actually seeing and the reason you're seeing so many stars is because we are in the middle of a globular cluster that often has these um, medium-sized black holes in them. And though it's actually kind of difficult to see the actual black hole, it's right there. This is, I had to cheat a little bit, this is where it is. It's in this particular region. So we're going to slow down and go check it out in a little bit more detail by basically approaching it and waiting for it to, to load. And while we're moving toward it, so what is it that uh, Stephen Hawking is talking about and why is it he proposing a completely new representation of a black hole? So when it comes to black holes, there's actually something known as information paradox. Um, when we talk about black holes, you may already know that, you know, it's something that uh, um, prevents light from escaping. So basically, it has something called event horizon and things that uh, enter this event horizon that I'm about to approach never really exit. So basically, here's the event horizon. If you cross this, according to modern theories, you will never be able to come back and everything that falls into the event horizon kind of sort of gets destroyed and disappeared. But this by itself has a bit of uh, a concern. One such concern is actually the fact that we believe that information can't be just destroyed. So you can't just disappear. As a matter of fact, information has to be always available somewhere. And uh, according to Einstein himself, he said that if you were to cross the event horizon of a black hole, you shouldn't even feel anything. You shouldn't even see anything. You shouldn't be able to feel what you just felt. And so what this suggests is that, well, it seems that um, event horizon is a bit of a problem. Now, 
it, it creates a problem of information being destroyed. And it cannot be just destroyed. It cannot be just not available to us anymore. It cannot just disappear. And so for this reason, some scientists suggested that there is something called the firewall. Basically, as you approach the black hole, you essentially experience this um, a tremendous amount of energy bursting toward you that kind of burns your life and that sort of kills you. And that energy comes from this information that was uh, previously absorbed by the black hole. But what Stephen Hawking proposed uh, in 2014 is something a little bit different. As a matter of fact, it's something completely different. It completely and totally gets rid of the idea of the event horizon. In other words, this black hole, literally the black hole that you see on the screen right now, according to him, does not exist. It doesn't even look like this. He proposes that there is something called apparent horizon. Basically, it's this area here where information kind of gets stuck on the surface. And as you enter this, you wouldn't even feel anything. You wouldn't even see the black hole. But you basically kind of get stuck right here on the surface of this apparent horizon. And all of the information that enters black hole stays here until it gets released as what we know today as basically um, Hawking radiation. This is a, a type of energy that he proposed is emitted from black holes. And one of the reasons we now today believe that black holes actually, actually uh, dissipate and disappear. So in other words, as you enter the black hole, you kind of don't feel anything, get stuck right here on the horizon. You obviously probably get destroyed, but all of the information that came with you is then released through other energy in a very chaotic manner. Now, it doesn't mean that you can just enter and exit because when you're released as a different type of energy, it's all very, very randomized. It's all very chaotic. So it's kind of like trying to predict weather months ahead. You can never really predict it because it's so chaotic. So it's the same sort of situation here. And so what he actually suggests is that when you are observing black holes, instead of seeing event horizon, what you might see is what's known as um, a, a, an apparent horizon full of this very interesting holographic storage of information. So essentially black holes store like tremendous, tremendous amounts of information that came into them through billions and billions of years. Now, whether we can use this one day is still a question, obviously, and whether this is real is also a question, but if he's right, this actually creates a very, very different view of how we perceive black holes today. Now, some scientists disagree with him, obviously, and some scientists propose other things, like, for example, they actually suggest that this apparent horizon doesn't explain everything about information paradox, and they also suggest that firewall is still a bad explanation, but some scientists even suggest that Okay, maybe it's not a parent horizon, maybe it's not a, a holographic representation, maybe it's that all black holes are actually connected to wormholes. So as you enter a black hole, you then sort of exit somewhere else in the universe, or possibly even a completely different universe. So that's just some of the other explanations that try to explain this information paradox. So today we still don't really know what the actual answer is, but for now that's the best explanation from the mind behind black holes, Stephen Hawking. But anyway, that's really all I wanted to talk about in this video and I kind of wanted to present this new explanation for event horizon or basically the lack of event horizon uh, that is unofficially now uh, supported by Stephen Hawking. So whether he's right or not, we might not know for a while because even if we look at the black hole in the near future, we won't really see anything different um, and we'll definitely not be able to tell if there is an event horizon or if there's a parent horizon because they would probably look kind of similar from a distance. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who likes to learn through video games and wants to learn more about space sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else you may have not known before. Let's finish this video by entering this gigantic, scary, supermassive black hole Sagittarius A star at the center of our galaxy. See you guys tomorrow, space out. And as always, bye-bye.